All right, well, this is Aaron Squire coming to you guys again this week, and I've got two guests on, one that's pre-recorded. I've got Cabal Papa, which I'm about to show you that interview, and then, of course, joining me from episode 29, I've got Hex Boss, the boss of Hex. So if you guys want to know more about him, um, we will plug his stuff, but go back to episode 29 and check him out there. So go ahead and make sure you check that out. We will be doing a giveaway if we get at least 20 people in the channel, uh, or 19, because that's what I rolled up on lots of dice but other than that um, we're going to be doing some uh, interviews of course and talking about some of the news with Hex and then we're going to do a uh, deck doctor with a deck that's going to be uh, Replicator's Gambit type of deck, uh, combo-y type of deck so we'll go ahead and lead right into the uh, interview. Alright guys, well this is Aaron Squire and I'm here with uh, Cable Papa or Cabal Papa uh, Andrew Chapman from my Twitter feed and uh, he is another one of the Dragonborn Guild people. And so, yeah, he's here to talk to me about some of the content that he does. And uh, so, yeah, just tell me uh, first about your TCG background, Andrew. Well, I have a pretty extensive background. Most of it's through um, our great friend Magic the Gathering. Of course, I started all the way back in Ice Age and Ooh. played all the way through. Got heavy into tournaments uh, when I started college, of course. So that was... I want to say Mercadian Mass Block probably is, right. is where I really started heavy uh, playing uh, in tournaments. I started in the Ohio scene, which is, of course, huge uh, for the tournaments. And uh, from there, I mean, I had... Like in Central a, Ohio? Like in um, where in Ohio? Um, it was Alliance, so I played a lot in the Canton area. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, so I mean... Yeah, I used to live in Dayton for a little while, so yeah. Right. Right, right. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I used to play, you know, the Cleveland, Canton, you know, right. Youngstown area. Cleveland Rocks, stuff. right? Of What's course. that? Cleveland Rocks, right? Well, oh, sometimes, yeah. sometimes. 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 That's about all rocks. it does, though. Not all the time. Just sometimes. Uh, so, I mean, from there I went, um, you know, I, I ground into U.S. Nationals twice. I had a top 40 finish at Grand Prix Richmond, which I think was 2007, if I recall. Wow. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I had some modest things. Uh, <laughs> Just some things. That's, that's <laughs> Well, I mean, those aren't huge accomplishments by themselves in the Magic world, of, of course, but I had some. Right. I was a, uh, a feature feature article writer on Pojo.com. You can still find plenty of my articles there. Right. I had several articles on uh, Star City Games, a couple of which even back when they first started their premium uh, side of their website. I had a couple go there on the premium side. Again, you can still find them. I've I've dug them up and found them. So, uh, from there, I've, uh, I've you got to pay for that stuff, though. I mean, that stuff isn't free, you know. Well, most of them were. Just one or two of them made it onto the premium. onto the premium. Yeah. 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 So now I've, I've I'm writing for Hextex, uh, of course. I'm writing on their website. Mm -hmm. uh, I stream everything from my constructed stuff. Uh, been doing a lot of drafts right now, of course. You can right. Find everybody that. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Find that <laughs> I, I just use my normal handle, Cabal Papa. So it's twitch.tv, Cabal Papa. And, right. Um, I've been starting to get quite a bit more of a following. So I'm doing quite a bit more. You know, I've really brought it through. So. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so what? how'd you find Hex then? I mean, you're such a big magic player, you know, writing all that yeah. stuff. I mean, talk to me uh, about well, that. Well, actually, uh, you know, Jizam uh, Jetta, you had last, white, last week talked about. Um, how a lot of us came over from a game called Legacy of Heroes. Mm -hmm. And I was playing over there, and the funny thing was is I was actually the leader of another clan, guild, whatever you know you wanted to call them over there. <laughs> Group, uh, grouping. <laughs> and, yeah, well, and, and Dragonborn, they were really, they were what we basically called the whales. You know, a lot of them are spent a pretty decent amount of money into the game. Right. And and my group was more of either the free players or the light spenders, but we worked really hard and you know, we were probably about number three or so. But we had this little friendly rivalry going on and I always joked with them because every time I developed a player and someone got good, right. they'd take them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, as that game started to die, and we all started moving over here, um, they, you know, they scooped me right up, and and I, I fit right at home with them, and yeah, um, we do a lot of a lot of talking, a lot of play testing, uh, just about anything and everything. 
Yeah, it's crazy that like in the game there aren't even really the the social constructs not there like the guilds and all that stuff, but these these social constructs have already kind of like emerged and built themselves up all by themselves. I mean, we have a, a lot of streamers, uh, a lot of people that are regulars in those streamers uh, streams, and then you've got of course all the different guilds that have built up already, which is pretty crazy. I still remember uh, Corey talking about how he was showing the game to like an investor or something and he was trying to find the website for some some reason he didn't remember the website or something and he kept having to page through people's uh guilds and stuff and the person was like is this is this game even li is live already and he, he's like no no it's it's not even in alpha stages yet <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's pretty funny uh to think about so uh, I guess we'll just kind of move into some of the news. Uh, some big news this week. Uh, we had E3 all week. I was watching a lot of World of Tanks stuff. Used to play a lot of World of Tanks. Not as much anymore. Didn't win anything. Uh, but I did, you know, pick up a couple pointers when they were doing uh, some of their shows and different things. I, I watched the way they stream and, you know, how they, they, they conduct themselves. So that was good for me. Uh, but the big news is now we've got set to Shattered Destiny. Uh, yes. It's kind of uh, a big deal because people still feel like the client isn't exactly on the best footing, and we still don't have PVE. And so a lot of people are asking, "Well, what's this, what's gonna, what's this mean? You know, we're going to have Shattered Destiny for players, and then it's going to be all these people in closed beta. It doesn't make a lot of sense to them." Yeah. Uh, to that point, I would say that there's this to me kind of signals that they may have an open beta planned for before Shattered Destiny uh, if I was to plan that. Um, I mean, what do you think about this, Cable Papa? Or Cabal Papa? Well, you know, you hear all sorts of little blips coming from uh, CZ on a lot of this stuff, and you know, they've come right out and told us that all of their different features and plans that they're working on uh, they have different, different groups of people working, and they're all running in, you know, uh, parallel so that the production of one doesn't necessarily have to do with the production of the rest. Right, exactly. But, but, I, but I find I, I find the timing of this set to be a little bit of a paradox. I mean, some of us that have been playing since early Alpha days have been playing with these cards for nearly, what, like eight months now? More, yeah, like almost uh, two, two, uh, two sets worth of time frame. Like, it's, if you're talking like uh, a typical TCG time frame. I mean, we what, eight, nine months now? Well, a full year now we've seen the cards because they kept releasing them in small smidgens. But, I mean, right. it's been a full year, which we're going to get to in a minute. Right, right. I, I mean, so th there's there's that stage of us that are really, you know, hurting for new cards. And, but to me, I, you know, the, the community is really hurting for features. Right now we've got a, 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 a draft mm -hmm. game is what we can do. Right. Um, the, pe the people who have spent money on the game can sit here and play. The ones who can't, I mean, even though gold is supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be a PVE um, a fun that you can get from the game. Right. And they, ha they have it available through drafts. But if you're not going to spend money on the game, then you can't draft and you can't get gold right now anyways. So I find it to be very, you know, featureless uh, going in right now. And it, I think that the game, you know, is... More cards are wonderful, but we really need those more features if this game is going to move forward much at all. Right. Yeah, I mean, the cards are definitely going to help out, and of course it, it makes good business sense to release another set because that's that's a set that maybe the Kickstarter backers won't have that much of, and so now they have to you know maybe spend a little bit to get to it. Of course, the big thing to me also is the trading in-game along with the auction house, and um, so we'll kind of use that as a segue to talk about um, real quick uh, at E3 uh, I just watched where Corey was talking to I don't know it was like the E3 it was just basically someone that interviewed him right. at E3 and uh, he, he talked about the auction house and they, we see some actual video footage of someone using the auction house which is pretty good to see which tells me that it's, it should be pretty close to getting ready to, to go live Mm -hmm. um, of course, some of the the problems with it is, um, you know, we want to make sure if if you're a, a CZE or I guess Hex LLC now, um, you want to make sure that it, it there's no chance of duplications. There's security is like a, the biggest thing, and making sure that exactly. those cards are stay collectible and stay, um, uh, you know, unique. 
So, um, Kabbalah Papa, do you know anything to add to that? Ooh. Well, that's been my prediction for a little while. Is I, I think the auction house has probably been ready for maybe even almost a month uh, right. now. But it, it, that is not a feature that they can put out to the public and say, hey, test it out, see if you find any bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's just one of those features that yeah. they have because to Because if sure. they make a mistake, you're, they're going to have to let you keep the cards. You know? Exactly, uh, or something. Uh, or, unless it's blatant that you're, you're, you're exploiting. Like, yeah. if you see something happen, I mean, I, I would encourage everyone to report it if you think that it's a little bit, you know, shady, and don't do it again. Let them do it again. Let them reproduce it. Give them as much information as you can, but uh, right. please don't take advantage of the system because, you know, if you do, um, then there may be some repercussions, and, and things can get into a bad, um, you know, area. Uh, on top of that, uh, we also have two videos that they released uh, to give us the PVE environments and to show us exactly what that's going to be like. It's basically just some aesthetics, a little bit of you know eye candy for all the people that are starving for that PVE content. Um, some good steps, uh, some good stuff to see. Uh, I remember that we talked quite a while ago that the first PVE content will be some sort of arena or something where you'll go through multiple steps and that's going to be like the first thing we'll be able to do. It won't be an actual dungeon. Um, uh, did you get excited about this at all, uh, Papa? Uh, well, you know, they didn't show us much in the videos except for some shiny pictures, and right. and, and I didn't get too excited about that. You know, I've been on the record of saying in, in different groups uh, for a while now, and, and some people kind of laugh at me when I say it, and some people just kind of uh, uh, <laughs> bite their lip and hope it's not true. But I, I'm, I'm on the record of saying... That I don't think PVE comes out before Christmas. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. I mean we could <laughs> definitely take some bets. Um, so that kind of segues us to like some of the next news I wanted to talk about. But um, they're talking about how you're going to have these deck sleeves for everybody that's in the game right now uh, for the first birthday of Hex being the Kickstarter days. What they're using, I guess they're using the date of what are they using up here? The ninth ended its Kickstarter on the 9th of, I guess, this month of June? Yep. yep, it was just two days ago. Yep, so two days, three days, four, whatever. Anyways, 9th of June, last year they ended, I remember the, they have they have a video, in fact, I recorded myself watching the video, because I'm a nerd, and uh, they got their champagne out and stuff, and uh, I, I still remember that, but they did, they, they run you through some of the things that they did last year, but then they go ahead and they say they are going to be at Gen Con with a LAN again this year, uh, which is basically means computers and stuff for us to play the game. So there's a very good chance. I mean, I, if I were to release PVE, I would love to see it at uh, Gen Con. Of course, I don't know if it's going to be ready or not. Um, there may be even a chance that they may bring bring the physical PVE and like lock it up and then maybe get some some of the coolest people like you know like Colin-esque people and bring them put them in a back room somewhere and they'll play the PVE dungeon you know right. sign their NDAs and stuff if they're there uh, I'm going to be out there so I encourage other people you know if you come come out there go ahead and say hi to me I won't bite um, you know anything to add to that uh, Cable Pablo? Uh, I, want to, I keep calling you Cable, like you're no, from like, no, I, like, like the the X Men. You know, the guy that goes from the future into the past and he has to change the past. Well, yeah. if that were my uh, special power, then that would be awesome. But it's then not. you would go by Cable, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. I definitely. Yeah. Would. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, I've I haven't ever been to a Gen Con myself, but I, you know, I I read about them. They sound very exciting, and wish I could make the, you know to one. But I, I don't know what features they're going to bring out there and you know they said they were going to have the computers um, the, there is a multitude of features that they haven't released I mean if we just went to the original Kickstarter list you can sit th sit down there and you could probably write you know a, a two page essay on all the features that they haven't released yet right uh, I mean PVE is the main focus of a lot of people but I yes but I, I think there's a lot of things that could come out and people would be like <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot the game was going to do that. I mean, yeah, just, like the just, double backs. I was just going to say right off the top of my head. Yeah. You know, all the double back, the card features. I mean, we were supposed yep. to be able to play card them tracking. So turn into foils and all of that. I mean, yeah, full art. A, right, right, right. And I mean, 
you know how much we'd be on there. We'd be on the game playing constantly. You know, who needs to sleep if, if that's going to happen? But <laughs> I'll um, tell you this much. Playing uh, Diablo 3 right now and getting gear that really doesn't do anything for me, it's not competitive. It's not like I'm playing against any other player. Man, I love pulling that handle. I love, like... <laughs> <laughs> going going through, I know what's happening. I know I'm going through, and I'm basically in some sort of uh, virtual arcade where, uh, you know, I'm basically in a casino, and I'm just, like, hoping that the new, new gear drops. But then, you know, when it drops, I get stronger, and I kill the same monsters over and over again. Whereas with this game, I'm actually going to be able to take those cards and then measure them up against other players, and I'm going to be... I mean, it's going to... Like, for the addictive nature of... Uh, you know, casinos and that type of thing. This game's going to be crazy when it is that we finally get to see the PBE and we get those double backs and all that stuff gets released. It's going to be good. So, I I don't know if there's very much else to say. Uh, also, by the way, they, they say that they're going to have some specific things that are going to release at Gen Con, which are going to be PVE type of stuff, and it's going to be some more champions and mostly, like, deck sleeves and stuff. Um, right. I think that they said that they were going to release the champions if you wanted to. You could get them in some other way during that time frame. They, they mentioned if you even got on the game, you know, from your from yourself, you know. If right, I, if I logged during that time frame. Home. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, that was a change, too, because uh, originally they said they were going to give special prizes if you opened chests during that time. Right. And they've since rescinded that, you know, so that they wouldn't be tied to the chest openings, but simply due to participation. Right. So, I mean, I mean, deck sleeves are going to be a definite. Um, we probably won't see them doing, uh, what is it called, the WoW TCG, because they did lose rights to that, so that won't be a thing this year. Uh, right. They did release some other uh, card games, I believe, some other deck-building games this year, so we'll probably see some of that. Um, they released also a new version of the uh, Hobbit dice game, or they call it a board game. I call it a dice game. It's mostly dice. Uh, so that And that's also a lot of fun to play. And I think they also have the Walking Dead license as well. So, you know, I haven't gotten to play that, that one yet, I, but I have seen them play it, and that, that looks pretty fun as well. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's going to be a really good time. Uh, also, another thing about that area, or, or just Gen Con in general, I, I'm thinking that it's going to be a local area network uh, of computers, so it won't be actually connected to the Internet, where, you know, you won't be actually playing against other people that are on the, I guess you could call it the Hex Cloud, um, right. It's going to be very localized, which means that there may be some things that we'll see at Gen Con um, that they haven't released on, mm -hmm. you know, they may be just trying some of that stuff out there to see how people react to it or to see if it breaks something there. So it'll be very interesting to see, that's for sure. No, no, I, I think you could probably, you know, you could depend on seeing something that they haven't released yet. Right. So um, that's pretty much it for the news uh, today. So I'll just let... Uh, uh, Cabal Papa, just um, you know, plug his stuff once again, and then we will sign off, and I will uh, go to the live version of this and do the Deck Doctor. So, sure. uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, you guys can find me. I write articles for Hextax.tv. Uh, currently have a whole card evaluation series going on. Uh, you can find me at, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Cabal Papa. Or on Twitter at uh, at Cabal Papa Hacks. So I'm I'm all over the place out there. I you know I have free giveaways during my streams, much like everybody else. But my streams just aren't as glittery. But <laughs> my wonderful personality and awesome card evaluation at it as I go. Uh, yeah, it's okay. You're a pro. You know. You know. You right, got the right, entertainer right. types, and then you got the pro types. You yeah. know. Well, you know. <laughs> I, I talk so much when I'm uh, choosing my picks. I sit here and talk about just about every card in the pack. I've oh, sorry about that. I've oh, actually we lost had some you. People, I've actually had some people kind of <laughs> yell at me to like, I can't, I can't tell what you're gonna pick because you're talking about every card. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually, usually I can only thrilled. talk about like four cards usually for me. Right. right, right. <laughs> So, yeah, that's pretty good. So, until next time, uh, this is Aaron Squire signing off, saying God bless you and your families. Try not to rage too much out there. And so, it has the E3 uh, picture of Corey sitting on the couch with, I'm not sure who this gentleman is, but I, I guess he Yeah, I is... cannot call his name offhand. They said it there. I didn't recall. Right. 
Uh, I mean, it's in, it's in the interview, and he basically goes over a lot of the basics. You know, every time Corey shows the game to uh, a wide audience like that, he kind of has to break down the very basics, so we don't get a lot of new information. We did get to see the auction house in action, which was pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that was definitely you know some gameplay footage which we we're pretty used to at this point. Um, he also talks about yep. in, in here the that... Poker AI did what Poker AI does best in the Blaze <laughs> Elemental in the second main phase. Congratulations! Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't... Yeah. Uh, but he does... He talks about set two. Um, also, uh, if you go to Game Informer, it has some of the stuff for, uh, I guess, the set two cards. A couple of those are on there. Mm-hmm. Shattered uh, Destiny. Yeah, Shattered Destiny. And then he highlights the fact that MMO Huts made this a very uh, one of their most anticipated games of the year, and uh, it also made the list of very impressive games on E3's showcase. So, all good. Yeah, things. I saw that. I saw that section of their showcase video, and it was it was pretty cool. I don't know who the guy they were talking to was. It could have been uh, a representative. It could have just been a player at E3. But the uh, feedback that he was giving for uh, for Hex and what interested him about it, it was good to hear. Right. Yeah. It's always good sure. to hear people's when people get positive feedback that aren't part of the Kickstarter community or are getting introduced to the game at places like E3. Right. 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 Yeah. For sure. I completely agree. Um, I don't know. If there was really too much more to say here. Uh, also, I'm just going to mention as we're going to the uh, to the Deck Doctor portion of the show that I do have a contest right now. I'm looking for 300 subscribers, and you need to post on a YouTube video. If you go to my YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, it's the first one that comes up. It's got me and my son Elliot, and we're uh, talking about the contest. And you can either get a draft, uh, a free draft, or you can get a uh, or you can get a uh, hex beta key to the closed hex. Uh, so. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube yet, make sure to get over there and do that. Um, I probably will cut it off at some point, maybe the end of the month, if I don't get the 300, and I will um, just give it away. But you know, because I do want to get it out there before we go to open beta, and of course, there's, it's hard to tell exactly when that's going to happen. But um, yeah, I do really appreciate all the new subscribers that I've gotten this last week. So moving on to the deck, Doctor. The deck we're going to build tonight is based on one that I, I played against when I played against Hexed Havoc. Now what he was doing was he was running a Sapphire Wild Ruby deck, and he was running the Ruby... Oh, we, I forgot what the guy's name is. You told me, you told me earlier. Hex Havoc? Hex, is that uh, who we were, ta- we're, were talking Hex about? Havoc? Hav- yeah, it was Havoc, and it was Hex Boss. You told me what the card is called. It's um the it's the one in Ruby. Oh, uh, you're thinking Oken Ceremony, the wild the wild card, the Church of the Troops. Well, I was thinking about what the reason why he was in Ruby. I was just going to explain that real quick. Uh, the reason oh, why the he was in Ruby. War Machinist. Yeah, War Machinist, which is basically whenever you play an artifact, you you get to deal uh, one point of damage to your opponent. And so what he did was he hit hit it up with Replicator's Gambit. And then he was searching his deck with either Peak or with Oaken Ceremony to get to that um, Machinist again. And then they all are, uh, all those new Machinists are artifacts as well as the same creature. So it just basically one-shots you when he when he plays them again. So that's the combo in the deck. And I felt like that was good and it was interesting and fun, but I didn't see uh, us necessarily needing Machinist in that deck with Replicator's Gambit, I really felt like if you could just Replicator's Gambit uh, a Buccaneer, that basically wins the game outright for you. Probably not all in one turn like Machinus does, but being able for us to come out of Ruby um, I think is a very much a huge plus. So that's the that's the deck we're going to build today. So we're, we're actually starting completely from scratch here. So we're actually going to go through the different cards and figure out what we're going to throw in here. We've got the PVE here. And this, again, is the Hex CCG Browser and Deck Builder uh, website, which is you know really good. I, I really uh, highly suggest it for people that are trying to build decks because it does your curve for you. It does a lot of the things that I look for. So let's go to my deck where I've already created an empty deck. And I, I called it something funny. Maybe it's not here now. I swear I created this deck. And I called it something about, uh, I guess we'll just create another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I have I have so many decks. I need to, yeah, take it easy. It's one of the ones without a champion. Actually, I, that's what I should look for. Uh, Swift Strike, Jolt Energy Chimes, Wild Gambit. Yeah, there we go. That's what I named it. Hey, there we go. This is empty deck, so we're going to start adding 
some cards to this. So we're probably going to go ahead and add the Mirror Knights here because that's a really... We want to draw lots of cards. That's a big deal. Uh, whenever we're playing uh, decks like this, we want to draw lots of cards. Also, we need to choose when we're going to go off. Um, so I don't want to talk too much because I know Hexboss is here and he's he came to hang out. And again, go to episode 29. Check out my interview with Hexboss and you can find out all about him there. So... Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry, you said the name of this deck was Wild What? Oh, I named it Wild uh, Gambit, and so Wild Gambit. Okay. Wild Gambit is what I named it. I mean, I'm sure you could name it something else if you thought something was cool. I mean, you'll have to keep refreshing to like kind of keep up with me, anyways, which may work for you or it might not. Uh, we'll pr uh, we'll go ahead and put Oracle Song in here because it does draw us cards. We're not sure exactly the numbers right now. We're just gonna put four. Uh, Sensei is another big one for this deck, which we can gambit. It's not the greatest gambit target. Um, I'm not sure if I want to run Wyatt or if I want to run another card. I probably do want to run Wyatt in this deck, so I'm just going to put him in there for now. We could run him. We could run uh, Running Deer to save us some health. There's a counter magic. We don't want five. We can't run five. That's not legal. And there's that Buccaneer. I probably need to put the Gambit. I might have already gone past Replicator's Gambit. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, for now, I'm I'm considering Ancestor's Chosen, but we may we it, it's going to be a little bit counterproductive because it's going to throw Specters in the deck, which is going to make it harder for us to get to our combo. Um, however, the Specters themselves aren't bad if we replicate Gambit Replicator's Gambit those as well. So we have to weigh the trade off. It'll depend on curve, and we'll we'll theorycraft that a little bit. Uh, Time Ripple's not a bad one either to have in here. Uh, what else? Survival of the Fit is probably not. Mesmerize is like a maybe, so we'll go ahead and throw a play set in there of that. Mimic is another one we might consider a one of, maybe, in this deck. What else? We definitely don't want Crash a Beast. That's not really going to do very much. We could play Howling Brave in here, but it really doesn't do too much. I want Come into Play abilities. That's mostly what I want to have with the, the Gambit, because I want it to just be overwhelming. Another one we could play is the uh, Wild Witch. The I forget what her name is. That Witch. Whatever whatever her name is. Definitely, you could definitely run her in the reserves. or The uh, Glimmer Glen. No. Yeah, the Glimmer Glen? Glimmer Glen Gl Witch. Glimmer Glen Witch, yeah. Yeah. It's like a tongue twister right there. Mm-hmm. No, not as bad as Shell's safe, sure shot. That one gets me every time. <laughs> so I am looking for about to get at least 20 people in the channel to do a giveaway tonight uh, around that, actually 19. Um, so just so you guys are aware of that, you know, if anyone's not here that you know could be here, um, you can get a hold of them. Of course, I do know that we do our, you know, every time I do the show, it's on uh, the typical Magic players, Friday Night Magic. So a lot of those people are out, but. So I do understand that. Uh, let's get Replicator's Gambit. And, we'll, yeah, we definitely want to run a play set of those. Oh, well, let's get the alternate image ones. Let's be cool. We'll do the alternate image ones, yeah, because we're cool like that. Apparently the thing doesn't, uh, it doesn't measure those properly, necessarily. There we go. Or maybe it does measure them against each other. It should, it should see that these are the same card. Um, and so you can't have four of both. The curve on the deck is really low, which is actually pretty good for us uh, for running a combo deck like this. Uh, you said Glimmer Glen Witch? Yeah, there she is. We'll put her on here for now. And then we got to put some shards in here. So we'll just, pre preliminary, we'll just put in um, 10 of each of the shards. And we'll do the uh, curve. Lately, I've been forgetting to do my curve at the end of the show. I always forget to do that, so don't get on me too much about that. But do check the deck list, because I do update it whenever I go back and do the deck list. But I, knew, I did the number four for instead of Shards of Fate. I'm not Twitter literate. Oh, oh let's see. Let's see. Fate? Maybe that will... Nope. Oh, you know what it is? I don't have... I don't have no color checked. That's probably why it's a no color card, I bet. Also, I didn't look at any um, artifacts, so I probably need to do that as well. Shards of Fate. Where are you? There you are. 
Another card we could run in here, but we probably don't need to because we are not really ramping, is we could run Chlorophyllia, but it doesn't really do a lot for us. It, it basically just pulls cards out of the deck, which is nice for us, but other than that, it doesn't do a lot for us. Let's see, what else do we want? Of course, we've got Crying in the background, so I'm going to let Hexboss, I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to let Hexboss talk a little bit while this Crying's going on. Oh boy, I'm supposed to compete with a crying baby. All right, well, I can do that. I was just uh, talking with... Are you guys hear me? Yeah. Ah, he's... Got to they can hear you. Yeah, I just turned off my mic. Oh, fair enough. You, you kind of scared me a little bit when you uh, went off like that. I was just talking with a couple of people uh, in the chat. Um, there's two names you'll find me under. Hexboss underscore Codex is my Twitter account. Hexboss is my... Uh, if you've seen my content before, then you know this, but it's gonna it's my website focused on the PV and lore content. Hasn't had that much. But what I was talking to some people about is Codex Reaper is my in-game name and also my Twitch account. Gonna be doing some giveaways over this week. Actually had a giveaway for a beta key and some player packs uh, this week. So, I'm just looking what uh, Squire's doing with this deck and... I mean, it looks good. There's definitely interesting cards in both Sapphire and Wild that you can use Repeater's Gambit on. Um, I guess I'm going to have to see the entire deck uh, once we stop uh, editing it to... Yeah, we're just... Yeah, it. this is what... Yeah, usually I throw in all my ideas first, and then I just start paring it down and mm -hmm. making decisions. This is yeah, usually what I do. The crying seems to have seceded or stopped, but you can always jump in whenever you want, Hex Boss, and you know, start talking, mm -hmm. and I will... Shut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like Easy the crying enough. is back. Uh, Elder Streamer is another interesting Boy. one for this hmm. deck, that's for sure. Because we can we can gem this guy with a come into play ability, this Elder Streamer. Yes, the Dreamer, the Dreamer definitely has some interesting uh, mechanics. I guess I wonder why you're why we're throwing Mimic in here. Maybe it can um, be useful, but it's yeah, somewhat I mean, situational. We'll think about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, the Manti Elder Druid is probably more of a reserves card. We can throw him on there. I'm not really seeing too much else now. Yeah, we'll probably cut that mimic. We we probably will. There's an interesting idea in chat right now. I don't know how viable it is, but it's at least Droz. interesting to think about. Repli yeah, replicating Droz Walker. Yeah, that's a different direction. I think that's a different. Uh, different deck, really. That's more for the uh, deck that's trying to be, uh, what do you call it, tempo. So we did see in the last sense. the last tournament, we did see a basically a tempo Droz Walker deck win, right? It had Droz in it, right? If I remember right. Possibly. I didn't really keep up. Was that the uh, the latest challenge series? Yeah, the the challenge series that seems like it was so long ago now. Right, because there have been some delays recently with um Right. Well we can't do any we John won't run a tournament if people can't trade and if we don't have at least the option. Ah, that's house. okay, that's what I was Because we won't we won't run a tournament if the people have bought cards off our website and we need to make sure that we fulfill those orders. So he won't yes. he won't in good conscience run anything because it's just not fair. Uh no, and, that totally and, makes sense. Yeah. Um Draws a card. I'm looking for a good come into play ability, and I maybe the best one I've got is, yeah, like comes into play does plus one plus one or plus three plus three. Are we looking for gems or? Just I was looking at gems to see if I want to keep any of these majors. I've got the Battle Beetles and I've got Elder Streamer in here, uh, and I'm not really seeing something I want to have besides maybe plus power and toughness. And that's kind mm. of not the greatest because a lot you're going to be copying a bunch of things, and then they they'll be able to buff one thing, and maybe it'll get to swing if you already have some sort of board presence. But that does doesn't seem that great. So we can already cut the battle beetles for sure because they're just so far off curve for us. That's a pretty easy one. We might still keep the Eldritch Streamer for something. I'm not sure. We we may or may not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm really kind of in between on that one. We'll see. I think I might rather have the Ancestor's Chosen or, like, Wizard of the Silver Talon. Because with the Silver Talon, we're going to get a lot of troops. I mean, we're getting double bodies every time. And this is a criminally underplayed card um, for what it actually, you know, it could do. Uh, it does see a lot of play in drafts, that's for sure, that wizard. So... Uh, another card I think would be really interesting in here is Briar Legion is another one. We're actually going to move these Glimmer Glen Witches, I think, to the reserves. 
Unfortunately, I can't do that unless I get rid of some. But we'll, we'll put those on the reserves. That's where they're going to go. And uh, I'm just not really feeling having them in the main deck. The Mirror Knight seems pretty good to me. Uh, that was one that Hex Havoc was running in this deck, if I remember right. I don't. I'm pretty sure he wasn't running Wizard of Silver Talon. I mean, we've basically almost got the deck sort of together. I think you're right. The Mimic doesn't really do a lot for us. Yeah, and I think you can spend that card well, placement better on something else. I mean, you know, we are playing a lot of things with come into play abilities. So I mean, we can mimic, we can mimic our wizard and make another wizard. We can mimic Briar Legion, probably the yeah, best. Yes, so I say Briar mim- Legion. You could mimic there. Briar Legion is probably the best mimic target, but overall, I mean, it's and Briar probably- Legion actually is a pretty good, um, yeah, gambit uh, target as well because well, that's even why, though yeah. it goes back, you play others, and then it still gets the plus two plus two buff. Yes, exactly, yes. And you could bounce it with... You could even bounce your own Briar Legion with Time Ripple to save it if someone's trying to murder it or something. You do a lot of things with Briar Legion in this deck. And he could get really big. The only problem is he doesn't have Crush, uh, you know, by himself. If you're looking for bounce, another option... uh, Another theoretical option is... Oh, what is it? Ah! It's one of the. It's a four-three human that. Returns oh, yeah, that guy. Hand. Yeah, that's he, like uh, a one of. If we decide to run him, I know what you're talking about, though. Um, he only bounces your own stuff. That's his only downfall. Yeah. Like he only. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't increase the cost. The downside right. with using Buccaneer or Time Ripple on your own troop is it adds the one cost to it. If you, right. you which isn't you know if it's you not horrible. if you plan it right, it's not terrible. But. Yeah. Exactly. I think we're more in Sapphire than we are in uh, Wild right now. Actually, I'll do a deck analysis. Yeah, Devoted we Emissary. Have... Yeah, Phoenix brought that up in the chat. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah, Devoted Emissary is pretty good. We're, we're pretty heavy into Sapphire, so we probably need to actually focus on cutting Sapphire cards to kind of even things out. Um, again, looking at the combo in this deck, we've got Oakenge, and we've got... the. You have to play four Oakenge, and you have to play four Peak. We don't necessarily have to play four yeah. Oracle Song. Um, in fact, I'll probably just take that down to one for now. Um, the wizard we could probably take down to two. I do like having ancestors chosen, although it might be a little bit clunky. That's going to take some testing. Again, like all the decks that we build here, uh, a lot of this stuff we're just focused on curve and getting the concept and the focus down on the deck to make sure that we have a, a pretty good, solid uh, now, baseline. Now, think about oh, we only have two ancestors chosen. The thing is, well, I mean, it. Well, I guess there isn't a huge problem. You are you do get the card draw with the emissaries or the uh, ancestral spirit, so at least you're not you know wasting that, and it's only one cost, so not a huge. Right, huge it's not issue. a big yeah, it's not hugely de- no, not detrimental. Really. Um, do we have buccaneers in this deck? Yeah, I we got Phoenix... the we have the playset. You have to have playset of okay. buccaneer in here. Oh, it looks like I for somehow I didn't put them in here. Okay. No, I was about to say it's not that's, in that's there. That's like the combo we were talking about. Somehow I missed it. Thank you for pointing that out. Otherwise, that would have like totally like defeat the whole purpose of the deck right oops this is what my viewers are here for thank you exactly <laughs> they do. i really appreciate that also it looks like i got one new person i haven't seen mort hex and armies of mordor actually two people in the channel yet so i'd like to say hello to you guys it's good to see you guys armies of course was on a uh, couple of different episodes of deck uh deck building the squad he has his own stream that he runs which is uh, pretty pretty enjoyable to watch. I think he also, as a streamer, has plenty of things to give away as well. If you guys are looking for those beta codes, which I know you are, I know mm-hmm. that you are. So maybe the mesmerize. If you have it, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the mesmerize. <laughs> I do like having the time ripple. This is one deck where I really do like having time ripple. I I want to keep this mimic, but at the same time, it's probably not the best. It's a little bit slow. So let's go ahead and just move that to the reserves. Um, if we decide to run it at all, you know, it's another one where it's, it's really, I, I'd still love to have best of three games um, available for us to play in uh, just uh, challenging each other. Uh, that would also help out the tournament if we end up having to do another uh, challenge series tournament with uh, brackets through Challenge again. I'm trying to figure out what else we need to cut They're talking here. about the challenge tournament. That does bring to mind that one of the things on the table for Hex features are those big tournaments. Right. I wonder if eventually at some point, I wouldn't expect this up front, but I wonder if eventually tournaments of that size could be created and are hosted by uh, by people or a way to support those in-game aside from just the one-on-one matches. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Like within the guild, it would be nice to have guild tournaments, guild run tournaments. Yeah, I think that's what you're going for. And uh, yeah, we've brought yeah. that up to uh, the, the devs, and they are receptive to that concept, like having maybe like in inside a guild, like you could do your own draft, for instance. You wouldn't, but you wouldn't keep the cards. I have to refresh the page here. But yeah, they are very receptive to things like that. They just have to figure out how to do it right, where it is that they aren't losing money on it, really. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of a big deal. Um, the bottom line there, as it were. Here I'm going to go ahead and. Refresh. And of course, the other thing, I mean, their focus is going to also be on when they get their own qualifying tournaments. And we don't have those, but once they start making their qualifiers, right, um, for the regions and then for world, then that's going to be, you know, a huge deal too. Right. Yeah, because there'll be a limited uh, realm, and there will be a, a constructed realm for that as well. Exactly. For where it is that you want to be competitive, you know, you could obviously try to do both, but. Um, some people are, are more predisposed to do well in limited or in constructed. Right, exactly. Uh, this, this Ancestor's Chosen seems to be not disappearing off of the deck. Evan Bull has an interesting idea. What if you drop the Shards of Fate for the adaptable infusion devices? The infusion device does the same thing, uh, and with Anna you yeah. get the part. Yeah, I I know, but now I had then I'd have to add more shards. I would definitely run. I would rather run shards of fate over adaptable infusion device. Like, why would you have to? I mean, the only difference is you don't get. Well, why would you have to add more shards? Because you you don't get a charge either way. Why well, that would I've I've got twenty twenty three shards in the deck right now, so I would have to re add the shards anyways. Um, the question there is really. Do I need a turn one, turn two, turn three play in a deck like this? I I really don't see it necessarily. Um, I'm I'm a big advocate of Shards of Fate right now as being like the best resource fixing card um, that we have available to us. And running sure. and running uh, adaptable infusion devices seems pretty risky. I mean, you could try it, see if it works for you. But I I'm pretty sure Shards of Fate is going to do a lot more for you than adaptable infusion device. Okay, okay I guess I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is a 19 shard deck either, Coach. I I, I completely agree. Um, <laughs> Some of this, no. If we're running Kraken, yeah. So I don't I don't see that happening. Um, the big thing is we we're kind of like down to it where we really kind of need to make some cuts. It's more sapphire cuts than wilds because the wild cards we have in here are pretty minimal. They're like enablers um, for the most part. You know, Sensei is going to draw us that card and block for us. Briar Legion is hopefully going to be a an uh, additional card we could play instead of Buccaneer that will get out of control. Um, the Ancestors Chosen we, we went ahead and removed from the deck and moved to the reserves. Of course, it's it's not updating, but hopefully it's... Okay, good. Now it updated. Um, probably another Mesmerize. We can... Or either that or Counter Magic. Maybe Counter Magic. Maybe just three Counter Magic and we can move one to the reserves. Because, you know, Counter Magic is very reactive. Um, we do need this to protect the combo. Again, so like the worst thing that can happen to you is uh, you can try to Replicator's Gambit your Buccaneer and your opponent will respond by murdering your Buccaneer or killing it somehow, which will fizzle your Replicator's Gambit. Um, so in order to deal with that, you've got either Time Ripple or Counter Magic, which seem pretty good um, if you feel like that's something that's going to happen. But of course, if your opponent is uh, completely out of resources and they can't play, they, you know that they're not going to be able to respond to you uh, gambiting, then you're in pretty good shape. Another thing that you might want to consider when you're playing this deck is if you haven't gambited your card yet, don't draw any cards um, for a while or save your card drawing. So you're going to have card drawing with Wyatt and you have card drawing with like Oracle Song. You might want to just hold off on those uh, cards. You know, because that way when you gambit that card, you can draw a whole bunch of cards all at once. You know, that's that's just another thing you you you're gonna have to uh, decide how you want to play that in the deck. So I went ahead and got rid of a Silver Talon. He's still really good, but you know, um, we need to get rid of Sapphire cards. Probably another Mesmerize, I think. Mesmerize is just another one that's gonna try to lock up the board state. It's really not part of the combo. Right. That's mostly what it's there for. I feel pretty good about this deck. Not amazing. I would like to have maybe gotten another rid of another three-point card, but I'm not sure what I would get rid of. 
uh, and I guess I would buff the Silver Talon back up. I mean, there's not a lot of great options. You could even just we could even just get rid of Silver Talon and go up on Mesmerize, or maybe go up on Oracle Song, because we are trying to combo out. We're at 23 shards in this deck. You might even consider going down to 22 shards. Um, you know, it's it's pretty doable with a three point curve like we have here. So that's that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and do the deck analysis here. So we've got the 12 uh, wild icons and then a whole bunch of sapphire icons. About uh, double, more than double the amount. So we're definitely heavy into sapphire. Sapphire is going to be good for us because. With peak, we want to prioritize Sapphire once we get the uh, pr uh, threshold met for all our wild cards. Additionally, when we're looking at our wild cards, we only have single threshold on all of them, which is really important when it's it's the minor color in our deck or the minor shard in our deck. Um, you know, we got the Briar Legion being a single threshold, the Moon Sensei being a single threshold, and then Oaken Ceremony. They're all enablers that are trying to get our combo going. So. Um, having seven wild shards is probably about right, I would say. Um, do you have anything to add, really, uh, Hexboss, you want to talk about with this Not deck? Not offhand. Or different there is a different comment, direction is, you might have gone? There is a comment that the chat saying is seven, uh, you know, could you even swap out, bring that down to five, and then bump four, uh, bump Sapphire shards up to 14? You, you could. could but you could of, try it. Part of the thing that you're noticing with a lot of these wild cards is that while they are one threshold, they're low cost. You're looking at the Briar Legion. You're looking at the uh, Minaro Sensei. You're looking at Oaken Ceremony. Yeah. So some of those cards, you don't want to wait too long. And while you do, if you combine the... Uh, like the sen the if, Ceremony you, you want to wait on the, until the combo's yeah. in the deck. But everything else, yeah, you want to play Briar Legion and Sensei almost instantly. Right. And Sensei is another optional target. is a pretty poor target for Gambit, but it is there. Right. I mean, drawing lots of cards is always good, and then you could maybe draw lots of cards and then get set up the combo again, you know? Yeah, but getting those two and three plays out on the board, I mean, if you've got a Briar Legion, you don't want to be waiting until turn four or five or later uh, with it stuck in your hand because you don't have a wild. You want to have a really good guarantee that you're going to get a wild or a Shard of Fate in turn one or either in your opening hand or turn one right so actually so. I, I i honestly think this is a decently um tiered deck i actually think this might be upper two tier two range um type of deck you just need to play it well and uh get it to happen for you um in such a way where it is that you're you're paying attention to a lot of what's going on with the deck it's going to take a lot of practice to get this combo deck to work as it does with most combo decks however i do like this combo deck over the last time we did a combo deck which i believe was the uh it was the one where it used four different cards and the reason why is because this only technically uses two um it uses gambit plus a lot of these enabler uh you know the buccaneer we've got buccaneer targets Wizard, Sensei, Briar Legion, uh, a lot of great targets. I mean, I guess you could do a Mirror Knight, but that's probably not the best. Um, but, you know, it's a two-card combo, one of them being the uh, the Gambit. Of course, you do have to draw Gambit, which could be a problem. So if you don't have it in hand, you might end up actually blowing Peak to get to the Gambit um, early on in the game. So you do have to pay attention to that as well. I guess as I'm looking at this, one other option that we could maybe see if there's a way to fit it in would be the Cerulean Mentalist. The card that says it's a three cost card, anything inspires anything at three or higher to draw a card whenever it attacks the champion. Specifically, I'm seeing something like that could work well with Wizard if we're throwing in other removal like Buccaneers or any of the other cards. Most of the troops that we have in this deck are. Um, well, they're two and three. Higher. Yeah, they're two and three ish costs. I think that mentalist might be a good, decent like one or two of. You'd have to really try it out. Oh yeah, not more than that. But, uh, but yeah, it's a buff, so you do have to pay attention to that. So um, definitely, a, you know, mentalist is it's much better in draft, and uh, of course, it's it's crazy good um, with uh, some sort of tempo deck. You know, because it draws you those cards, gives you more gas. But in this deck, yeah, it's playable um, as a one of. You got to be careful not to dilute too much, but it's definitely right. worth trying. Definitely worth trying. So that's a good point. Would it possibly be worth swapping for the Mirror Knight? Uh, Mirror Knight's the one that taps things down. 
Okay, well, he's not going to get computer time tomorrow. Oh, well, we already have Mirror Knight. Oh, you mean the Mentalist for the Mirror Knight. Uh, swapping it out for the Mirror Knight, because the Mirror Knight only triggers when a troop dies, which inevitably is going to happen. Um, it depends on whether or not you think you have a higher chance of drawing cards by your own troops dying off, or by being able to hit your opponent in the face. Right. Um, I, I, I mean, Mirror Knight is obviously going to be more difficult for people to get to because it is a rare card. Um, so True. yes, if you did have to run Mentalist over Mirror Knight, you know, that's a possibility. Actually, you know, let's go ahead and like look at this deck and see the rares in it. Um, we obviously have Replicator's Gambit, which is uh, a legendary, so that is going to be somewhat prohibitive for this deck to begin with. However, this card is somewhat difficult to work. We gave it a low score, so maybe people will be trading it off and getting rid of it. Um, I would price this card. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the store prices that we sell things at for on the TCG Pro Store personally, but I would price this card at maybe two or three dollars really, uh, because it's just mm -hmm. so difficult to play and it goes in. Um, decks which a lot of people would term as janky like this one uh, right a lot of the other cards you're going to pick up in your drafts i mean we've got common uncommon common 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 uncommon common yeah, common common most of these you can probably pick up and then you've got the mirror knight so this deck is actually pretty attainable it, it runs four legendaries and four rares for a combo right. deck i mean that's pretty good um that I mean, is the, probably the price for this deck is we're, you're looking at maybe less than fifty dollars for sure uh, to to build the whole deck if, from scratch. I would say so. Wait, so someone's saying go. that the, oh, the replicators the, uh, is rare. Oh, okay, rare. okay. Well, then it's going to be even. Yeah, so it's definitely a that's two or three dollar. Yeah, so that's even easier to get to. So this is, this type of deck is something you want to try out. I mean, I'm I'm definitely going to try to put it together this weekend and uh, see if I can get it to happen. Uh, it seems like a pretty fun deck. I, I, I played against Havoc, lost to him uh, three times, I think, when he was playing this deck with another shard in it to dilute it down even more and make it tougher for him to play the deck. Um, he, he kept saying, live in the dream, and his whole chat was pretty much saying that too. <laughs> he had people in his chat and my chat that were uh, taunting me. Uh, but it was it was all good times, all in good fun. So, uh, you know, it was all yeah, good Havoc's times. good. He's really solid. So, uh, right. Oh, that's the Kickstarter promo. That's why. Okay, yeah. that's why it's yeah. purple. Okay. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get uh, 19 people in the channel, so I can't do any giveaways uh, yet. However, I do encourage everybody to get out and uh, check out the YouTube because I am trying to get more subscribers on there. Once I get to 300 subscribers, all the people that post on the video, the subscriber challenge video, are going to be put in a drawing for either a uh, beta key or a free draft. So make sure to uh, hit that up if you haven't already subscribed to me on YouTube. Hexboss, go ahead and plug your stuff while you're here uh, before we sign off. All right. A um, few places you can find me online. On Twitter, you can find me at Hexboss underscore Codex. Hexboss PVE is my fan site for PVE and lore content in the game, of which we are still waiting for some to arrive. We got some cool videos this week. Um, but that's what I'm going to be doing there. And you can also find me on twitch.tv at Codex Reaper. Two of you, in fact, already found me and gave me a follow. Going to be doing weekly streams of Hex. Going to try throwing some other games in there as I can. But streams on Hex, giveaways are going to be happening. Once packs are able to be traded, going to be giving away plenty of those. Meantime, I've got some player packs and uh, one, possibly two, beta keys to give away over the next couple of weeks. So that's me. That's where you can find me. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and end the channel because I'm not sure when the next scream is coming with the kids. Uh, and I do want to <laughs> save everyone else's ears from that. So uh, until next time, uh, this is Aaron Squire signing off saying God bless you and your families and try not to race too much out there. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, Aaron. All right. Always appreciate it. Thank you.